Hi everyone, a very warm welcome to all of you. Today you are here in the best of the GRE series by IELTS. Myself, Anas, and I'm the quant mentor here. Today I like to share a very interesting quant strategy for the question includes inequalities. And I will be discussing a very interesting type of the question that comes in the GRE exam, that is quantitative comparison question. The level I decided to keep a good level question, right? You can say a moderate to higher order difficulty of the question. And now the question is like this. So you have two inequalities given. Quantity A uh, has one variable and quantity B has another variable. Right? Don't forget, right? The answer choices for all the quantitative comparison questions are the same, right? So please by heart them as much as possible for you. For this question, I'd like to discuss those answer choices as well. So answer choice A will be correct when quantity A is always, always greater than quantity B. Answer choice B will be correct when quantity B is always, always greater than quantity A. Answer choice C will be correct when both the quantities are equal, always. But if you are not able to get a unique relationship again and again, then you have to mark answer choice D. That means relationship cannot be determined. All right. Now, uh, before I begin to solve this question, right? Remember, the question will always be on your screen. Hence, you have to be very clear while managing your scratch paper in the exam. Let me get my scratch paper. All right. So I will try to write whatever I can in this particular uh, rectangle, you can say, so that I want you all to practice the similar way and solve the questions in, in uh, by managing your scratch paper really well. Because managing scratch paper is the only way how you can get 170 on 170. The reason is when you write on the paper, right? The thing that you have to take care of that you don't miss anything given in the question. Secondly, whatever you are thinking, you have to, you must be able to write that very, very clearly so that you don't mess up in any calculation or maybe in any interpretation. All right. So as the question is already on my screen, so please consider that is already written on my scratch paper. The first step is always jot down the given inequalities on your scratch paper, write the quantity A, write the quantity B, and then start solving it. All right. So let's begin and learn the strategy for this particular question. Meanwhile, if you all wish, you can pause the video, you can solve the question, and then you can join me back. I hope you have done that. Let's discuss this question. So Q is greater than S and PQ square minus Q is greater than Q square R minus S. Quantity A is P, quantity B is R. So my focus should be on how can I get some inequality or some way to compare the variable P and the variable R. All right. There is one very interesting hack of inequalities is that you can add the inequalities. All right, let's try to add the inequalities and see what relation we will be getting. We will. So Q greater than S and then remember to add the inequalities, the sign must be oriented in the same direction. So we have greater in the first inequality, then you must have the same sign in the second inequality. Now let's add them up. So when I add Q minus Q will be gone. I will be having PQ square and here S minus S will be gone and I will be having Q square R and the same inequality sign I have to copy down. Now tell me guys, I have Q square both the sides of the inequality. Can I divide both the sides by Q square? And if I do so, what sign should I have to keep, right? Can I keep the same sign or do I have to invert? Let me answer that. Remember, in an inequality, if you multiply or divide by a positive number, then you are allowed to keep the sign same. But if you are multiplying or dividing the inequality with a negative number, then you have to invert the sign. Let me give you an example. Five is greater than three. 
So if I multiply two both the sides, so I can keep the sign same because I multiplied with a positive constant. All right. What happens if I multiply both the sides by a negative number? Let's see that out. Let me multiply now minus three both the sides. Now tell me which number is greater, minus 15 or minus nine? Minus nine is greater. So what happened to the inequality sign? It got flipped. Hence, you have to remember this hack. Whenever you multiply or divide by a positive number in the inequality, sign will remain the same. But when you divide or multiply by a negative number, then the sign will invert. Now tell me guys, coming back to the question. What is Q square? Is Q square positive or negative? Remember, you are squaring a number. What can, what you can get when you square a number? Let's discuss that. Or all of you with me? So Q square, if you observe, when we are squaring a number, we can say that Q square can only be positive. The only doubt that is coming in my head Sir, why, call, why can't Q square be zero? You are right. Q square can be zero, right? If Q is zero. But let me check. If I plug in Q equal to zero, will the inequality be satisfied? Uh, P into zero square greater than zero square into R, zero greater than zero. That sounds a little odd, right? That means here Q cannot be zero. Now tell me if Q cannot be zero, then what can you conclude about Q square? Can I say that Q square will be only a positive number, right? A positive number. That's it. That's, this means if I decide to divide both the sides by Q square, that means I am dividing by a positive constant. That means I can keep the inequality sign retained. Let's do that, guys. So dividing both the sides by Q square, Q square, Q square cancel. Hence we have P greater than R. Now in the inequal, in the quantity A, you have P. In the quantity B, you have R. And you have deduced that P is greater than R. Now tell me which answer choice you want to pick. Absolutely, it is answer choice A. Hence that is our correct answer. For such updates and for such strategies, please uh, uh, subscribe to our channel and and be in the wait be in the waiting list for the upcoming video. Thank you so much, guys. Have a nice day.